Hello everyone, this is Ishrat Mohammed. As I promised you that I'm going to launch a program called Business Now with Ishrat Mohammed. Today I'm very excited to launch my first program. As I promised with you guys that I'm going to bring mentors, business owners, entrepreneurs, and they're going to share their love stories. I shouldn't say love stories, but their life, how they come to Canada and what they have achieved, how they have achieved. And trust me, this half an hour will change your life. This is my promise to you. So keep tuned and I'm going to introduce you my first guest, Sandy Seti. Sandy Seti, welcome to my show and I am really excited. I know your portfolio. Why not you can share with my viewers, when did you come to Canada? How, how was your journey? How you started? What kind of hurdles you have seen? And from this program, my intentions are to guide and coach my viewers that if you, they want to follow your path, what they have to do, what they have to do, and how they can achieve and they become like you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, I came here um, in July 2001, which is almost now 18 years. 18 years, years, years. And of course, uh, it was not easy, though the weather was very good, but in a few days, as soon as we tried to settle, uh, October, November, the uh, snow started to come in, it became cold and we were not used to it coming from India. Um, I still remember um, everybody was telling me to, how to get the car and get your uh, car insurance in place and everything because in winter you just cannot walk and you need a car. Absolutely. And obviously I delayed that process in November, December, sometimes I had to walk in the snow. There were no buses in midnight and my job was finishing at midnight. So, uh, so I want to hold you here that you have done a, 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 some kind of our job as well, am I right? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yeah. So that's the point I'm trying to make it here, uh, my dear viewers, that it's not easy. So again, what you're going to learn today that every single one who comes here, they do not have any backup. They have they've gone through and they have seen the tough life before they achieve this far, am I right? Yeah, absolutely, and weather plays a big part because when we come, we come from 40 degrees and 35 degrees and 45 degrees, and you're going minus 30. So mentally, you have to be really strong, and physically, of course, you have to sustain that weather because it's a big change for you. Although it seems like, you know, it's okay, we can accommodate, but I'm talking 18, 19 years ago, and today if somebody walks in there, you know, with the internet and Google and everything, you know what to buy, what to get ready, you can ask for information. Those days were different. We didn't have that much of information and Absolutely. we didn't know anybody here. So we had to take um, help from the immigration consultant to, you know, we gave them money to give us accommodation. We landed in uh, uh, an apartment and there were two other families which we were not told. Wow. So that was a surprise, not a good surprise. And we had to start from there and then, uh, you know, as everybody starts from the basement, uh, within 20 days we moved into a basement and then um, I still remember I had to pay $150 for a Bell home phone connection. Wow. And every day I would go to the shopping mall and call them and say, when can I get my phone connection? <laughs> and it took me 10 to 15 days to give them a deposit and then wait for the home phone connection. My IBM computer I purchased for $1,500 and it came in 22 days. And that's so, how I... I that's basically, I'm really thrilled and excited because when you talk, it looks like I'm thinking myself when I came to this part of the world. So yes, absolutely, you're right that you, when you come in, you're basically coming to a new culture, new country. Absolutely. And basically nobody's there to hold your hands. So Sandy, why not you can share with us, like, did you go to school? Did you take any courses from here? Who met you to, or who inspired you? to make you uh, wherever you are right now? Well, first of all was survival. And if you can survive, then you can succeed. Absolutely. So uh, obviously, as I said, the first three months, it took us to settle down to get the computer and look for jobs and everything, get into a rental uh, accommodation and you know go through all that, asking questions. There was no mentor available. We didn't know anybody here. Um, and it was tough because, you know, Finally, um, we got a phone call from the immigration consultant saying that, oh, there's some retail store hiring some people. Would you like to go? And everybody made me so scared that you have to get a job first and then think about the career. Mm -hmm. So my survival was to get a job 
whether it's eight nine dollars or ten dollars i still remember i think it was eight nine ten dollars so um, i went for the interview and the manager left and we were told that we have no idea when they will come back wow but the internet is there it's free if you want to wait you wait so out of the eight people by the time it was three o'clock six people had already left and so we didn't give up we didn't give up we sat there and uh, we went on the internet, I went on the internet and learned about the company, the manager came in and the first thing he asked was, you came at 10, I had to leave, I'm sorry, but I came back at 3, you're still here. So that's the first success. Wow. That, you know, 5 hours you waited, not many people waited, 6 went back. And what did you do for 5 hours? And I said, I was on the internet. And he says, what did you do on the internet? I said, I learned about your company. And he started laughing, he says, you were on the internet learning about my company for 5 hours? I said, almost 3-4 hours. And he says, why don't you tell me about my company if you were spending three hours on the internet learning about my company? So I told him everything about his company. Beautiful. And he thought I'm probably taking a shortcut and trying to lie, but I actually went on the, on the internet and learned about the company. So a job which was $8 an hour, by the time I left that office, I was given a supervisor job at $14 an hour. Beautiful. Only because that there was no shortcut. You know, I told them this. Absolutely. You were talking about the shortcut part yeah. because I have seen people when they come here, they think they're going in a dreamland. Once they go into Canada, they're going to have all the jobs going to fall in and they're on the path and they're going to get succeed with no time. Money is all over the place. But when they come in, they see the reality. Reality is different. And as you mentioned that you had to wait five hours and then you got a job. So after that, I would love to know what happened. Like, did you, how long? Well, we started the job, so he gave me a supervisor's job, and I did that for a year. Uh, then they promoted me to an assistant manager, but I refused taking that position because I knew that I'm not going to work forever in the long run into this field. So it was not my field. So you already had planned that what you want to go or where you want to go? I was from the service industry, so obviously I wanted to go into a business where I can interact with people. So you always should know about your strengths and mm -hmm. then work on your strengths. And your education is your backbone. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what we did was we realized that our education from back home is not that I'm a doctor and an engineer. So I had to put that on the side and look for education in the field I want to pursue. Absolutely. And then opportunities do come to you. You have to keep your eyes and ears open. Absolutely. And if you don't keep that open, opportunities will fly back. It's easy to get into something which is, you know, for example, with due respect, you can get a lot of work. There are a lot of opportunities. They'll say, oh, you'll get $18 an hour. Go do that. But if you don't like doing that, then you won't enjoy your life. Absolutely. So we wanted to do something which we enjoy and at the same time, you know, earn a good, decent livelihood. So obviously we went back into, so at that time insurance was told that, you know, it's recession proof in this country, insurance is the backbone and you always need insurance for medical, travel, whether it's home or car or business or life. Um, so we studied more on that and I am a graduate from Insurance Institute of Canada. Mm -hmm. I passed 10 exams, I'm a CIP, which is Chartered Insurance Professional. Went back to University of Toronto, did my Certified Risk Management. So I am a Certified Risk Manager. And but Sandy, when people are going to hear all this education, 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 they're going to say, you know what, I'm making, making money. I'm making decent money means I have a steady job and I'm okay. But why? people take risk and like what did you do different? Did you work and as well as you went, went to studies or you just quit your job and you went to studies? It was very tough because 9 to 5 I used to work and then 5 o'clock I used to go to university to attend my part-time courses and then come home at 9 o'clock and then on Saturday I would study and go give my exams on Monday. So it was not easy because we had to work to pay our bills. And then we pursued our education, which is almost we were studying for three to four, five years. Wow. And today I can say that the first company I joined, the manager who hired me, and in a few months from there, I was more educated than they who hired me. Wow. So in this country, eventually I became a trainer into the same company, training managers and everybody else 
because of my education and my experience and the passion. So if you work hard, there is no question this is a land of opportunity. Am I right? So if you are dedicated, if you are not sitting on your couch and watching TVs and Monday to Friday, nine to five job, once you come out from your comfort zone, there is no way that you're not going to achieve the target you want to achieve. Am I right? Absolutely. Because they say, you know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you. So it has to be, you need to know where you're going. You need to structure yourself, your profession, your passion. You have to put that in, in sync and then pursue your dream. Um, I always say that when you come to this country, we came to this country because we didn't really want a good standard of living. Of course, that's important. But a good standard of life. Absolutely. And the good standard of life doesn't come with all your luxury cars only. You know, running water, hydro, safety, and opportunities for you, you know, uh, for your children, free education, free healthcare. This is a good standard of life. So you are living a, a life standard which is millionaires living in other parts of the world where you have to pay for all those things. If you don't earn enough, you cannot have that standard of life. So it's really important for you to understand when you come to this country, you're coming for a standard of life. Living is part of it. Living is, you know, it'll come. Now, you have to pursue your education because education in any field, in this North America, it's all about certifications. Because whether you run a photocopier or you do this or you, you know, you work as a tradesperson or you're an electrician, everything is certification. So, dear viewers, you have noticed that today we have uh, Sandy Seti, we're going to talk about what he has achieved. So, we have discussed his uh, path. Like when he came to Canada, how he started, how he worked hard, he went to school and he was working. So as I promised you guys, this program will make your life, I'm pretty sure I'll try my best to make changes, especially the people who are afraid, they are scared to go move forward and they don't, they're scared to make a change. So in order for you to make a change in your life, you have to make a change in yourself, means you have to go out of your comfort zone and you have to study hard or you do have to follow someone you have to have a mentor in order to achieve your target so stay, stay tuned because i'm going to talk with sandy more about how and where he is he right now and how he can guide you how he can be a mentor of you so stay tuned thank you